for watching and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. I'm Birds of Politics and in this video I'm going to be evaluating the likelihood that Belarus joins the conflict trade. So let's start with this recent news and this is just come out today that Belarus is now introducing high terrorist threat measures. Now what is this? Well it essentially means that the country is going to let the Russian military in, and they will also additionally allow Russia to send drones in Belarus as well as normal forces who were probably recently mobilized in Putin's partial mobilization of Russia. Now, this was always going to be expected. Belarus has always been on Russia's side. There's never been a debate about that. However, there has been a debate about whether Belarus is willing to go far enough to fully invade Ukraine or join in the Russian invasion. And until just a week ago, Belarus had not sent any combat troops into Ukraine, or at least it had denied doing so, because potentially there may have been some in the first few weeks of the invasion before pulling out. Russia has launched, as we know, many, many, many missile strikes against Ukraine, and Belarus has mostly supported it, even voting with Russia in the UN to stop Russia being declared a terrorist state. Russia was always going to veto that resolution, but it is significant that certain countries, such as Belarus, voted with Russia, as well as others like China or India to staunch Russian allies who are now abstaining in the resolution. But perhaps most importantly of all is that Lukashenko's regime in Belarus is now aiming to introduce a ban on Belarus citizens going abroad. Many, many, many Belarusian citizens have left in the aftermath of the fraudulent election most recently that allowed Lukashenko to stay in power for an unprecedented amount of time, having led the country since the collapse of the Soviet Union. In that time, Lukashenko has gone from someone who was thought of as a potential reformer, not necessarily there yet, but someone who could potentially bring Belarus towards a quasi-democracy, as I'll call it, similar to what Hungary has today. Instead, Lukashenko chose to go down the authoritarian path, ending democracy before it even started in Belarus. And this ban on Belarusian citizens going abroad could potentially be a move to block the scenes that we've seen out of Russia, with many, many citizens fleeing into countries like Georgia and Kazakhstan as they try and escape a draft. If Lukashenko wants to hold the draft, it is imperative for him, in order to maintain his strongman uh, persona, that he bans the Russian citizens going abroad. We also now know that even as Russia has been launching missiles from Belarus, Russia is quite simply running out of missiles. They've gone from 444 air-launched missiles, down to 213 since the start of the invasion, 500-caliber missiles, which are sea-launched missiles, down to 272, and by far the biggest drop, 900 ground-launched missiles so from the two-share rocket launchers, so the modern-day equivalent of those, down to only 124. Of course, the 900 of those Many of those that are now no longer in existence were fired at Ukraine in the most recent barrage of attacks. Russia has suffered, even if it intended to do the opposite, it has suffered a demilitarization of its missile force, just as it has with its military, with Russia now accidentally arming Ukraine with its most up-to-date tanks, the T-90s, which are called the t 90 which is Russian for breakthrough, and the Ukrainians are now using these to make their own breakthroughs. So the slow demilitarization of Russia through conflict and an inability to replace these weapons has caused Russia to now need weapons from Korea, from Iran, from even potentially China, although China seems to be moving away from Russia day to day. But I do think that Russia will probably attempt to bring Belarus into the war even more than it already has been. No longer will it just be a base for Russian missiles, but Belarusian missiles will be fired at Ukraine as well. Another thing to note is the unions. 
the Union state is a current plan between Belarus and Russia to eventually, in some far away, maybe decades from now, maybe years from now, maybe never, to unify their countries. The plan never gives a timeline for when the two countries would merge into one. However, Lukashenko has been on board, but only to a certain extent. He's always maintained a certain independence because he's successfully able to play off the former Soviet states with Ukraine and even sometimes the West against Russia in order to preserve his independence and his power. But that could change if he joins the conflict. Not only will many of the former post-Soviet states, as well as the West, despise Lukashenko for aiding Russia with its invasion, but we can also expect to see Russia losing ground in Ukraine, leading to a Belarusian attack by its own military on its own government. This is because many Belarusian high-ranking generals and officers have signed letters saying that if Lukashenko does decide to invade Ukraine, they will do their best to depose him, which could result in one of two things. It could result in a, yet another authoritarian pro-military leader who simply is not, I guess, stupid enough or able to be bullied enough as Lukashenko is by Russia. Or it could be someone who is significantly more democratic in their government. So what do you think will happen in Belarus? Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe down below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.